one thing i have been thinking about these last few days and something that i think i'm going to make sure that i promise myself to do forever and ever is really really refrain and hold back from any kind of communication with anybody that i kind of like look up to um want to emulate want to supersede see you know get inspiration from whatever it may be i just don't think it's worth it i think all those interactions for the most part are terrible especially once that person becomes aware of your content and then they start asking you to delete videos and stuff it just becomes a little bit much and it's not videos it's only video and i think this is the first time and the last time i'll ever do something like that ever again in terms of taking something down for someone because i was in the you know midst of kind of confusion and stuff and i wasn't necessarily um in my senses in terms of uh, realizing that maybe that wasn't a correct thing to do you know I'm, if you're free to put out what you want to put out i'm free to interpret it the way you want to interpret it if you don't like it cool no problem but i shouldn't be taking anything down especially if there's no ill intent behind it or anything as well that's ridiculous and extreme you cannot like it of course that's particular that's perfectly fine but asking someone to delete a video really does make no sense because everyone's already seen it anyway and for the most part nothing really ever gets deleted from the internet there's always a copy laying around somewhere or somebody's always mirrored it out there somewhere the other but i think going forward i'm definitely going to refrain from doing that because i just feel like it's not even more so the person's fault or the people's fault i just feel like when you're a niche and somewhat underground type person or you're a niche underground celebrity as in you're not known to the global to the general public to the normies but you're known um to a real heightened extent to a very small and concentrated group of people it can be very difficult to navigate that whole world of people coming up to you and saying something or like, you know, making you aware that they're a fan or something in real life. It can be really strange to handle. I always kind of harken back to my very awkward and very clunky exchange with Juliana Huxtable um, you know, in, in Panorama by Bergheim, which did not go well. Um, she just finished playing. I had a great time dancing in the corner, you know, shucking out, sweating through my T-shirt, um, my feet all sore panting people was dilated and i thought you know what let me go over and say hi and just say look i really enjoyed that set and you know there, it wasn't like i disturbed the conversation or i came in mid you know um cry or whatever or mid hug it was like a bit it was a you know there's a lull in the group i can notice it I stepped in said hi and i don't know five words or something i don't know enjoyed yourself something along those kind of lines and the uh, amount of recoil um confusion disgust and um uh petrifiedness or whatever that word is look that kind of washed over juliana huxtable's face as i walked over was a reminder that you know what maybe coming up to a stranger even if you are a fan of what they do and telling them that you like what they do especially if it's a woman it would never really come off that well it's very hard for it to come off um non-creepy non um, without having any intention behind it it's very difficult just to come off plainly as a kind of hey i'm like a person in the comments but in real life sort of thing it just doesn't work and i was like oh my god this is so awkward i feel terrible and i just kind of stepped away and record i was like you know what i'm never doing that again and i think that might have been the same evening actually yeah i think it definitely was the same evening that i bumped into the guy from crossbreed kiwi and we had that exchange about me being a fan of crossbreed from afar and all that madness happened whatever it may be but that was one of the clearest examples for me that I need to refrain from it in general and just kind of leave people like that alone for the most part because it never really goes well. I think of some other occasions where I've kind of bumped into celebrities who've kind of been the high level ones who have been really nice. And the weird thing about it, I was just thinking is that some of those experiences, they can go either way, right? They can go really well, they can go really badly. There's really never a middle ground, like just a meh experience. But I also think the the kind of the unfairness of it if you are somebody that's known as a celebrity and stuff is that if you just treat somebody with a more a minuscule amount of just like what do I say respect a minuscule amount of kindness and you just kind of indulge them for that couple of seconds or minutes or whatever it may be it really does go a long way and usually for the most part you end up having a fan for life one example i can think of from years and years ago was when um, I think I was with my parents or something and went, went to a, I think I was with my parents. I think I was on the way to a church or something and we stopped over at the Tesco Express somewhere, I think in Bow and we bumped into Graham Norton. 
he was like shopping that time. I think it was late at night. And if I remember correctly, he might have been wearing like Ricard- this is again fashion head. I think he was wearing like a denim jacket and Ricardo Cavalli like combats cargoes or something. I don't know if you guys remember that, but back in the day, Roberto Cavalli used to make these cargoes that were all the rage for the moment. I think I guess all the gay guys loved them, and they had these mad, crazy embroidery on the side of them. They're probably quite Y two K now. Actually, if people pulled them out. They'd probably be quite trendy. But I remember seeing Graham Norton wearing a pair with like this mad amount of embroidery to the side of the leg, and you just hanging around in Tesco Express buying and shopping what you wanted to, you know, get for himself late night at Tesco's. And I guess at that moment, also you have to imagine Graham Norton was hot and fresh fish grease that Saturday show I forgot what it's called maybe it's a Graham Norton show I forgot the name of it was really popular it's one of the rare things that me and my parents used to sit down and watch all together as a family and kind of watch you know because for the most part TV was getting kind of crappy you'd have your computer upstairs in your room you might have a PSP or a Game Boy so everyone's kind of doing their own thing but I remember those sort of events like X Factor and that sort of Graham Norton show were the main things that you'd come down and sit down and watch so even if you weren't a fan of like terrestrial tv you'd know who graham norton was so bumping into him was like whoa this is as big as seeing any any big celebrity and i just remember him being really nice to everybody i bumped into him i remember we wanted to go over and say hi but we were all shy we didn't want to say anything i remember i might have waved at him from afar but i remember just watching him from afar interacting with people like just being shocked as we were right here you are looking for the heinz beans and then suddenly you see graham norton just like swandering down the aisle Everyone was flipping, captivated and shocked. And he was just minding his business, doing his life and enjoying himself. But I just remember him just being really courteous and kind to everybody that stopped him. And he did that thing that I remember Harry Styles did where when I bumped into him at Alibi one time where he did this thing where he didn't let you linger, but he also made you feel like you were seen. So there was no opportunity for you to like sit down and try and cut your elbow in a bar and have a long chat. But he still made you feel like, you had a uh, a worthwhile interaction and then you kind of went on your way it was really nice that sort of thing and to this day i'm a harry styles defender until the day that i die and still to this day i'm a you know um edward uh, from, which, graham norton sorry um supporter to the end that i die too so that can be the that can be the conundrum that happens if you're like a low level person or you're like a niche celebrity because you know if you do give this person a bad interaction most likely this is going to sour your their impression of you in their eyes forever i guess if you're you know you don't really care maybe you have too many of those interactions it just happens it kind of evens itself out but you also know if you go the extra mile and just you know exchange a couple of words with somebody it can also help them to be a fan of yours for life so it's a really weird place to be it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that regard and also you're not too sure if you indulge somebody in conversation you don't know if you're going to get a me who kind of understands social cues and is aware that sometimes I can go on and on and on and on and I can kind of excuse myself pretty easily from a conversation or read social cues for the most part and exit. But there are also those people who exist who have no idea what social cue is and they just keep going on and on and on and on and they never leave you alone and it kind of turns into the thing of like, have I caused a rod for my own back sort of thing? And you end up kind of bemoaning, you know, giving this one person time when you usually give everybody the finger. So it can be a little bit difficult to deal with. But for me personally, I've made this solemn promise that I'm never ever doing that again because I feel like in general it does solid the relationship it does make it hard to kind of see their art the same way and in general also I just don't want to be put in a position where somebody's asking me to delete videos or take this down or edit this and no it's not stop the game that I've come in this for I did this for my own kind of enjoyment so I could kind of share my own opinions you know I don't care if anybody sees them as you can clearly see from the stuff that I upload on this you know all that stuff that I talk about on this podcast I'm clearly not trying to you know ride the algorithm rave right was well, i'm clearly not trying to ride the algorithm wave i'm just doing my own thing and i'll be damned if i'm doing my own thing until this moment and now suddenly i turn into the flipping self-censoring guy where i'm deleting stuff to appease certain people and the reality is you can never appease everybody no one's ever going to be satisfied with the amount of work and level of work that you do so i'd rather just keep it stum, do my own thing 